All right, integrity means I want a guarantee. I want an assurance that my information hasn't been modified or my file hasn't been modified. Now, that can happen, happen accidentally through corruption or it can be malicious. If I'm looking to protect against accidental modification, corruption, then I'll use a hash. If I'm looking to protect against malicious modification, I'm going to use a digital signature. Okay. Later, when we get into um, some more of the technical details, we'll talk about how a hash is different than a digital signature and why a hash is good for corruption, but you need a digital signature for malicious modification. So just right now, again, just laying the groundwork. All right, and then the A. Does anybody remember what the A of the CIA triad is? And I always ask that because A in security can mean a million different things. Authentication. It can mean accounting, authorization, auditing. But the A in this case is availability, timely access to resources. So the solution there is redundancy and resiliency. We want redundant devices. Don't put all your eggs in one basket. Have a plan B. If server A goes down, let's be able to move quickly to server B. Right? Um, resiliency means that even under an attack, I can still perform the services that are necessary. So the two go hand in hand. All right, so when you have to define information security, you always want to tie it back to the CIA triad. And when we talk about information security and information um, and, and um, yeah, information security, we always want to revolve around the CIA triad. All right, so the goals of security, well, CIA, those are the goals of security. But in addition to that, we want to think about access control. And when we talk about access control, what we're focusing on is restricting what a subject can do to an object. Kelly Handerhand's a subject, she's active. Can I access a folder? Well, that folder's passive, that's the object. And how you restrict what I can do to that folder is all about access control. So Kelly wants to print to a printer. Kelly wants to print to a share, uh, access a share. First thing I should have to do is I should have to identify and say, hey, I'm Kelly H. Then prove it. Because when we start really getting into the risks associated with information security, you know, spoofing, we've already said social engineering is one of the greatest threats. Well, prove it. We know that identities can be spoofed. So show me something, tell me something, indicate something that proves your identity. All right, we move into authorization. I always think of authorization as kind of the so what. You're Kelly Handerhan, so what? Well, because I'm Kelly Handerhan, I can access this folder, I can print, I can log on to a domain controller. So what rights and permissions a user has, that is the authorization. Okay, and then we move to non-repudiation. And non-repudiation is all about, well, actually, let me just give you a definition for non-repudiation. So a sender cannot dispute having sent a message nor the contents of the message. So I can't say, oh, I didn't see that, uh, that message. I mean, I didn't send that message. Um, yeah, you can because it's traced back to Kelly Handerhan. Okay, well, I sent the message, but those weren't the contents. They must have been modified. No, because we can guarantee integrity. So non-repudiation really is that. It's a combination of authenticity and integrity. So uh, then the last thing I want to mention is sensitivity, or the last thing in this little section I want to mention is sensitivity versus criticality. And when we talk about sensitivity versus criticality, sensitivity is tied to privacy. Criticality is tied to availability. Or you can say sensitivity is tied to confidentiality. So when we're talking about sensitive data, it's what we want to keep private. Okay, I want to prevent unauthorized disclosure. This information is sensitive. Could be personally identifiable information, personal health care information, personal financial information. Those things could be confidential data, top secret information. Um, but that's sensitive material. We're wanting to prevent unauthorized disclosure. When we move to criticality, criticality is all about availability. 
If I've been in a car accident, I'm more concerned that information about my health is available to doctors than I am about the sensitivity of it. So certain types of data, the sensitivity may be more important than criticality or vice versa, and that may change based on, sens- based on the situation, the context of access, uh, of access. So, you know, some definitions there. We're going to keep on moving. Um, I mentioned top secret data a few minutes ago with classification of data. We talk about the cost, classify, and control. Classification of data, anytime you think about that, think of the three C's. Cost, classify, control. Cost, another word for cost is value. And that's really the phrase I'd rather you use probably even than cost, but the three C's is so catchy, I kind of use that. But when we're looking at sensitive information, so again, we're looking at confidentiality here. The first thing I want to do is I want to figure out what's the value of the data. And value includes sensitivity, it includes harm if compromised, it includes, um, you know, liability issues, all of those things make up value of data. So we first figure out what's our asset and what's it worth. If you've sat through any security class that I've taught, you will always hear this introduction. First step in security, what are you protecting? What's it worth? That's the cost. Then, based on what the information is worth, you'll find that we should have preordained or predetermined classifications. So, if we determine this has a high degree of uh, damage caused if compromised, well, we have classification criteria that says if there's high damage, well, then here's how we protect it. Okay, so the classification leads to the control, leads to how we protect it. So we figure out the value, we classify it accordingly based on its value, and then we control the data based on its classification. I just want to mention here um, that NIST, the National Institute of Standards and Technology, does provide standards-based documents to help you determine the value of data as well as how to classify it accordingly. There are two specific documents. To determine the value of data, there is FIPS, Federal Information Processing Standards 199 that'll help you look at data and determine its value based on the impact that it would have if it was compromised. And then FIPS 200 will tell you how to classify or how to protect the data based on its classification. Okay, so FIPS 199 and 200 are helpful in those cases.